I'm a feminist. I will not bow down to anyone. I won't obey you. I'm my own person. This is my own body. I'll do whatever I want. That was my favorite line before. I will do whatever I want. Every single pillar and foundation that I built for my life, my career, all of them came crashing down and then I was left with nothing. Hi everyone, welcome to season two, episode five of Ask Say the Podcast. I'm your host, Say Tioko, and today we're gonna talk about obedience. A lovely day to be back here at Sage Studios. So Sage Studios is the partner studio of Ask Say the Podcast. This is located at Capitol House in BGC and it is the only podcast studio in BGC and I'm so happy to be partnering with them. This is where I've been recording all of my episodes for season two when we relaunched Ask Say the Podcast and this studio has two soundproof rooms for podcast recording with high-tech equipment. This mic and this Rodecaster Pro Mm. This is where content creators can play and create lots of content. They have beautiful corners. And also we have a makeup room, a beautiful makeup room with all of the lights. And I love it so much. Sage Studios was made by creatives for creatives. Follow them on Instagram. I'll have the link in the information box. Our topic for today is quite controversial because I know that from the moment I say the word obey, they're going to say kulto yan, nasa kulto yan. And I know because I used to think like that. And when people presented me with any or whatever idea of obedience to some sort of thing, I would resist it right away because I'm a feminist. I will not bow down to anyone. I won't obey you. I'm my own person. This is my own body. I'll do whatever I want. That was my favorite line before. I will do whatever I want. And the idea of obedience for me was too limiting before. Now let's go back to the moment in my life last year when everything that I thought was important to me, every single thing, every single pillar and foundation that I built for my life, my career, all of them came crashing down And then I was left with nothing. This was during my transition from being of the world and then finding Jesus and then transitioning to my Christian life, which I have now. We were just talking about this an hour ago because I came from a Bible brunch session. Girl, it was a beautiful Bible brunch session. But we were talking about this, that The moment you surrender to God, the first thing he's going to do is rebuild your life. I'm sure you've heard people say before that there is beauty in the breaking. There is purpose for the pain. My entire career, back when I started in 2010, I started with makeup and then lifestyle vlogs. And then I went into sex education or sexual empowerment, women empowerment in 2020. That was my pandemic baby. And I built that. I felt like I built that brick by brick. Poured so much of my energy, my time, my resources into this uh, podcast before what it was before. So imagine my horror when all of the things, all of the bad things happened in my life and it led me to the point wherein I was faced with a question. I was at a crossroads. Do I continue with this or do I turn around and go back to God? I was lost. I was frozen. I did not know what to do. And I remember telling my sister, I told her, I feel like I lost everything. I feel like I'm losing everything because in my mind, I had all of these pillars and everything just came crashing down. All of them demolished. That was the word, demolished. Everything that I stood for and I believed in, everything came crashing down. And then one of the first verses that I came across was from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. And it is from verse 9 to 10. It says, God reached out, touched my mouth and said, look, I've just put my words in your mouth, hand delivered. See what I've done? I've given you a job to do among nations and governments, a red letter day. Your job is to pull up and tear down, take apart and demolish, and then start over. 
building and planting. I read this verse. I actually broke down crying because, di ba, sa ulo ko, sabi ko lahat ng pillars na demolish, na wala lahat. And that is exactly what God will do. One of the first things He will do when you completely surrender to Him, He is going to tear down all of the things in your life that you are so attached to. Na wala naman ka kwenta kwenta. He's gonna tear all of those down. And then He's gonna rebuild with you. When we go back a few verses, it says in Jeremiah 5, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. But I said, hold it, Master God, look at me. I don't know anything. I'm only a boy. God told me, don't say I'm only a boy. I'll tell you where to go and you will go there. I'll tell you what to say and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. I'll be right there looking after you. God's decree. These are powerful verses, you guys. Again, that is from the book of Jeremiah. And in the message version, so this is the message. It's the Bible in contemporary language. The title of Jeremiah 1, verses 1 to 19, the title is demolish and then start over you can just imagine how much i cried after reading this because it was so fitting there is purpose in the pain and there is beauty in the breaking so if you're listening right now and you are currently in that breaking that demolishing process i'm telling you hold on i know you've had a lot of moments already that you feel like you want to let go and you want to give up because the breaking process is just way too much to handle i know i know it i know it i've been there i know it how painful it is how uncomfortable it is i completely understand it is very hard to break away from things that you tied your value your self-worth to it's so difficult to break away from that so i completely understand you but i am telling you if there's one thing that you can do for yourself is just to hold on because after the breaking girl i am so excited for you after the breaking beautiful things are gonna happen after the breaking and i need you to hold on to that hold on to that kailangan lang talaga pagdaanan yung demolishing process because as humans diba we've we build so many things in our lives that don't even matter at all hold on it's going to get better. It's going to get so much better. The demolishing process cannot happen without your full surrender. You have to surrender completely to God. We were just talking about this in the Bible brunch session earlier. We were talking about surrender, complete and full surrender. And we say, it's so easy to say, yes, Lord, we surrender. But do you really surrender? It's not the cutesy surrender. It's not the cutesy type of surrender. It is Full on surrender, bawling your eyes out, your knees on the ground, your hands up high, complete surrender. Even subconsciously, all the subconscious things that you are clinging so tightly to, all of the things that you are subconsciously gripping onto, you have to surrender all of that. And if you don't have the words, just say, God, I surrender every single thing to you. Even the things that I don't know that I need to surrender. Lord, I surrender. I fully surrender everything. And I remember a conversation with my friend from Bible Brunch Manila, Enzo. Sabi naman, beautiful things happen after you surrender. But you have to surrender muna. Surrendering is letting go of all the things that you want to happen. Letting go of all the control that you have on things. Surrendering is letting God call the shots in your life. And that is really difficult, especially coming from a person who was so OC about everything. I want everything done a certain way. I want everything planned out. I want everything followed. It is so difficult. And I know I'm not alone because I've met a lot of people who are just like me. We serve a great God. He is amazing. He is the best father there is. And he has plans for everyone. My life, your life, everyone. After the demolishing process and the surrendering part of my journey came the obedience. And this happened earlier this year. I'm sure I've told people, some people about it, but Bible Brunch Manila is one of my first acts of obedience to God. 
Bible Brunch Manila was whispered to me earlier this year. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was just at the back of my mind, the exact words, Bible Brunch Manila. I knew God was telling me something, so I decided to launch Bible Brunch Manila quietly lang, cutesy lang via WhatsApp. I had my platform, but I wasn't super, like super duper on fire yet for God. And I wasn't, I was hesitant. I was hesitant because I was just, you know, a budding Christian. So then I launched it on WhatsApp and one person came. Hi, Pam, if you're listening. One person came, Pam came and we had brunch and we talked about the Bible and our faith. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful session, but I was kind of discouraged because I felt like I asked God, Sabiko, what do I do now? Only one person came. What do I do now? So I stopped everything, right? And then the term Bible Brunch Manila still kept playing in my head, somewhere at the back of my mind. Bible Brunch Manila, Bible Brunch Manila. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was a nudge, a super strong nudge. There was a force telling me to do something about it. And I finally said, okay, I'm going to do this properly this time. I designed the logo and it was just so beautiful. The entire process of planning, properly planning for Bible Brunch Manila. And this is what I came up with. This is the logo. I'm going to flash it on the screen. But one of my favorite verses kasi, is from Joshua. It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is such a declaration. And I feel like Bible Brunch Manila, that's the verse for it. Because we serve the Lord, and that's a declaration. And in the center, I put Jesus with the hands like this, because Jesus is the reason for all of it. And this is the logo that we came up with for Bible Brunch Manila, and I'm just so happy. And I want to give a shout out to Peel Studios, who made beautiful table collaterals for all of our brunches. Thank you so much to my friend Isa, Isabella. She is my friend from the industry, and we reconnected via Bible Brunch Manila. How amazing is the lord we launched it and i decided that i was going to hold an influencer event to launch bible brunch manila and my friends from the industry tito anthony pangilinan hannah pangilinan melissa we have ray we have jessica everyone came together and they supported the event and i will be forever thankful because this jump started everything for bible brunch manila and ever since we've been holding the brunches and these brunches are just so, they're so beautiful. And we like to say that in Bible Brunch Manila, there are no accidents. Meeting people, no accidents, no coincidences because everything is divine appointment. Even the way people sit together, everyone is strategically placed and God is bringing people together. And this community is bigger than me. And I love what God is doing for Bible Brunch Manila, how God is moving in Bible Brunch Manila. It's only been a few months, but the way God is moving in the lives of people in the community in Bible Brunch Manila, you will not believe it. Looking back at all of the pillars or all of the foundations, or all of the beliefs that I had last year, all of those things that came crashing down, that were demolished, all of those things did not give my life meaning. If there was a purpose, it was self-serving. So no wonder it came toppling down, right? No wonder. It was all self-serving. And I'm so happy that God took those away from me. I did not need them. I don't want them back at all. Fast forward to now, that I have Bible Brunch Manila as my ministry, this thing gives me life. I don't know, I cannot explain the feeling that I have whenever I see people during their brunches just sharing so openly about, you know, what they went through, what they're going through, what they've been through. It's so beautiful how God brings everyone together and he heals brokenness through fellowship. He brings people together with the same experiences so that they can heal together. They can process together. Bible Brunch Manila is a gift. This is a gift to me and to everyone who joins us for the brunches because I really truly believe that Bible Brunch Manila is anointed by God. This is his idea. Even the name Bible Brunch Manila, it came from the Lord. This is his idea. 
This is his project. This is his will for my life. And this gives me so much purpose and so much meaning that I am offering all of my life for this. Obeying the Lord is never a waste. When you surrender and then you obey, that's when you start to see things fall into place. Because his will for your life, it's the perfect one. It's the perfect plan for your life. One of my favorite things to tell people right now is until you obey, you will only delay. I'm going to repeat that because it's so beautiful. Until you obey, you will only delay. So until you obey what the Lord has planned for you and your life for his glory, you will only delay the blessings that come along with it. You will only delay the goodness, the grace, the mercy, and the unconditional love that God wants to share with you. It is such a beautiful reminder because we get so caught up with wanting to control everything, wanting everything to be under our tight grip, under our chokehold. And it's nakakapagod. Girl, imagine if you're, you're too like this. Eh, kakapagod, girl. Let go. Let go and completely surrender and then obey and watch God work wonders in your life. A really beautiful thing happened earlier at the Bible brunch session. So we were taking just photos for, you know, for social media purposes. And we were about to take a picture with Stell and she opened my Bible and she opened it to this specific page. Now, I don't believe in coincidences because the Bible is a way that God communicates with us. She opened it to Ecclesiastes. Napansin ko lang because when she was taking my pictures, I was reading, sabi ko, oh gosh. And it is highlighted because I've gone through this book before. It is from the book of Ecclesiastes 8 verses 2 to 7. And listen to this. The title is, No One Can Control the Wind. Do what your king commands. You gave a sacred oath of obedience. Don't worryingly second-guess your orders or try to back out when the task is unpleasant. You're serving his pleasure, not yours. I've heard so many stories about obeying God and that one single act of obedience opened the door to so many people coming to know Christ. Some people see obedience to God as slavery, but I see it as true freedom. True freedom because you align your life to God's will for His glory. There is nothing else I want to do for the rest of my life until my last breath, but His will for my life for His glory. True freedom is found in God. True freedom is found in Jesus. True freedom is found in living life with Christian values. It is not in recklessly and aimlessly seeking all the pleasures of this world. That's not freedom. That's actually bondage. Seeking pleasures and things that won't satisfy your thirst that is bondage. It keeps you in chains. You are all chained up. So a question that you can ponder on as we end this episode is what areas in your life do you need to completely surrender to the Lord? And when I say surrender, I don't mean cutesy surrender. I mean full on surrender. Even the things that you are subconsciously holding on to so tightly. What are the things that you need to completely surrender? And to close this episode, I want to repeat what I said earlier. Until you obey, you will only delay. You just listened to Season 2, Episode 5 of Ask Say, the podcast. And this is Say Tioko, signing off.